Thank you so much. And particularly, I'd like to thank Steve Shore. Uh, he's been doing this for quite a while. I'm really I'm very impressed with the program uh, and pleased to be part of it. So uh, again, thank you very much. And uh, also, I'm uh, pleased to be meeting all 2,640,000 of you out there. With, with, with that were true. Uh, but uh, I want to start in and, of course, share with you um, slides that sort of capture uh, my career in a sense and why I decided to, to believe what I tended to believe. I'm a scientist. I've been in academia all of my career. Um, and so I look at research as something kind of interesting, to say the least. Let me pull up the share sign here. OK. Um, I've, I've been, as I say, in this field a long time, doing research, being involved in policy development, teaching, lecturing, etc. Uh, and uh, I have to say that it's been a thrill to learn something about this subject of nutrition, but it's also been a difficult process at times. And at times, I have to admit, I'm kind of disappointed that uh, we haven't made more progress, but we're making progress. We're making progress. I'm going to argue that part of the problem that we've had to really get this message is, is the fact that we live within a paradigm. And I'll explain what a paradigm is. I'm going to share with you too, uh, some of the evidence to show that the, this paradigm really does exist. Now, before getting on to that, let me clarify three words that sometimes get confused, interchangeably used, and it's not quite right. Uh, these three words, diet, foods, and nutrition, uh, we all know what a diet is, is the foods we routinely, routinely consume on a daily basis, weekly basis, if you will, lifetime basis. Foods is part of the diet. We all know that, I hope. Um, and foods, of course, uh, are expressed in the body by a concept called nutrition. Nutrition is how an array of nutrients in food promote health and prevent disease. And so that's, that's been my, my work over the years, is working in the field of nutrition. I would like to describe nutrition as the biological expression of food. And what happens to food in a biochemical and physiological sense when we consume it? So I'm really focused on what happens in the body, in the cell, between organs, all that sort of thing, to really learn what, what we tend to think we know. Now I'm going to share with you three important facts right up front uh, to show you where I think we are at the present time. I'm pretty confident this is where we are. Uh, to kind of set the frame for what I'm going to subsequently say. Um, I suggest that nutrition of whole plant-based foods minimizes disease and promotes health better than all the pills and procedures combined. I know that's a mouthful. Uh, controversial maybe to some people, but that's it. I'm going to stand on that statement. However, uh, the existing standard American diet, just by contrast, is rich in animal-based and of what I call addictive foods, or some might want to call them convenience foods. These are foods that may be concocted entirely of plant material substances, but they're loaded with excess salt, sugar, and fat. I'll have more to say about that later. So we've got two things about the American diet, Western diet, if you will, somewhat typical of other Western countries. Uh, one is it's uh, concentrated with animal-based foods, and the other is also kind of loaded up with these so-called addictive foods. But here's a third point. Nothing is so profoundly misunderstood and neglected in the healthcare world as that of the science of nutrition. I would argue that the controversy that we get involved in, the confusion we get involved in, largely narrows down, boils down to what we really understand about nutrition. Here's some, some evidence uh, that uh, support uh, essentially where we are at the present time. Um, and I say these are the sad results of this diet. Uh, and from 1986 to 2016, fast food consumption increased 226% in variety, portion size, and energy. Uh, for, to express in real terms, that's about three and a half times increase in that mere 20 year period. It's really quite incredible. Meat consumption globally is highest in the United States. We consume more number one in the world, okay? 213 pounds per year in the last uh, data that I had available to me. This in turn leads to a total of about 200 million animals killed per day in the world in order to, for, for us to have that meat consumption. 
and milk and eggs, of course. Uh, so uh, those are quite some statistics here uh, describing a present condition, not very promising to be honest about it. Um, but 60% of us adults have one or more chronic diseases. That's, hard. That's horrendous. I mean, this is by adults, I'm talking about all grown up people, if you will. 60% of, of us now have one or more chronic diseases. That's sad to say the least. Uh, and to illustrate what that might be related to, we stand among 44 countries, more or less at our economic level. We stand 28th in those 40, uh, 44 countries in terms of life expectancy. We're not doing so well. We're really not doing so well. Very poor statistics to say the least. 